a tutorial in Photoshop on how to take a top-down map, like a battle map, and transform it into the isometric transform. And I'm going to do this the way that I've been doing recently uh, so that my import into something like Foundry VTT or Roll20 goes really quickly. So I'm going to be really careful about the dimensions of the maps so that it fits my kind of standard template hex trick. Uh, so that all of my art assets and all of my props and all of my minis, so it all kind of looks the same uh, and is operating on the same dimensions. So uh, here's the instructions written out. I'm going to start with a top-down 100 pixel square battle map. And I'm starting there and then applying these, uh, these transforms so that it lays out perfectly on a 74 pixel hex grid. Or if you're using the new isometric plugin from Grape Juice, a 64 pixel isometric grid. So I'm going to you know, walk through all these steps in Photoshop, but effectively what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my map is perfect. And once I've done that and saved it off, I'm going to create a new image and I'm going to use the placed linked feature of Photoshop to make a layer that it's a linked copy of the reference image. And then I'm going to put that linked layer in a folder and then do two transforms. The first one, just scaling the whole thing down by 78.4%, and then rotating by 45 degrees. And then a second transform after the first one's been completed that scales the height only by 57.7 degrees. And that'll make it line up perfectly on the map. All right, let's go do that. So first we gotta go grab a battle map. So I'm gonna grab this one here from the Dragon of Ice Fire Peak. I'm just grabbing this from D&D uh, &D Beyond, and I'm grabbing the player version of this module that I bought. Um, so I'll just open that as a new tab, and uh, it becomes, and hit copy. And I'll go back to Photoshop. The nice thing about Photoshop is that when I hit new, and create a new document, the first setting that it creates here is actually whatever I have in the clipboard, the dimensions of whatever I have in the clipboard. That's what I want. So I'm gonna grab that, paste, and, and there it is, there's my map. I'm gonna hit save. I'm just save this as a Photoshop layer here called Top Down. Sorry, I got a cat here that really wants to talk about Photoshop. So I've got this top down image, and uh, the problem with this is that it's not the correct dimensions yet. So I go to Photoshop, and I'm going to go to Preferences, and then Guides, Grids, and Slices. I'm going to set my grid to 100 pixels, one subdivision, and red and then view show grid and now you can see that that is the size of a 100 pixel grid uh, so these these grids that it has here are way too small uh, I can take the measurement tool to see approximately how big they are so underneath the eyedropper is the ruler tool and I can kinda go and hold down the shift key as I make that ruler go and go from sort of intersection here to intersection here and see that the See that is 43.56 pixels. Wow! So it's only gonna it's gonna have to get more than double uh, the size in order for this to work. So I'm gonna take the image uh, and, and just right away I'm gonna I'm gonna take this up to like 220 percent. So I'm gonna scale it up, and now it's closer, but it's not quite. So going from image pixel to pixel here or from uh, grid to grid. Now it's 190, it's uh, 94. I still need, gonna need to get bigger. So it's time to do a, an actual transform. So I'm going to zoom all the way out. And if I control T and make a transform, I can take this width and height and hold down the control sort of uh, with the length on. I can scale this up and down, but it's gonna be really hard to get the grid to match the red lines uh, the way that it is here. So instead what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna transform. You see there's this little anchor point here. So if I drag and click the anchor point up into the top right, I can move the image so that the, the sort of the, the tiles underneath here match up nicely with the red line. I can move the anchor to right on top of that. And then when I scale up and down, it uses that as the pivot. And all I gotta do is just kinda line this up. 
Now, no matter what I do, I'm going to have a lot of error. Um, you know, it's not going to be perfect, and that's going to show up when I drag to the right, and you're going to see that, depending on how perfect I got this, may look really nice over here, but by the time I get to the edge of the map here, all the way on the right, it'll have drifted a little bit. See, it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to have to t walk this down. So I'm going to kind of get it perfect on the full left-hand side of the map, then drag over to the right-hand side of the map, and I'm going to get this perfect. So I'm going to get this black line here to line up with this red line by making the height and width slightly smaller. So I'm going to need, you know, 103.9, 103.8. That's so 103.8 is too small. See, it's seven. It's moving in the wrong direction. Six, seven, eight, and then nine is too big. So it's somewhere between 103.8 and one point. 103.9, so I'm gonna go to the second digit, five, 103.85, so eight, six, eight, seven, eight, seven's too big, so eight, six is perfect. Hit okay, and these, these in this grid, the, the starting grid is already perfectly square. So there, you can see now, this image is now perfect, right? This image is now a perfect 100 pixels, great. So, save. And then the other thing I'm going to do is view, show, turn off the grid. So now there's a perfect 100 pixel image. Save, top down is saved. Let's go back to our instructions. First step, we're going to create a new image, place it, put it in a folder. So I'm going to all copy new image, hit enter. And instead of pasting, I'm going to go place linked, file, place linked. I'm going to grab the top down, place it. And you'll notice that it's not a normal image layer in the, right here. It's a linked layer, which means it's just a reference out to the other file. So if I were to actually go into the original top down and make a new layer and then draw something, save, it would actually show up in the linked copy of it, which is neat. Uh, it means that I can go and fix something after the fact. Let me just go and delete that layer in top down, even after I've started this transform. All right, so save, let's go to the instructions. After that, I'm gonna put it in a folder and I'm gonna do this transform of 78.4 and 45 degrees. So I'm going to put the top down in a folder. The reason I'm doing that uh, is because if I do two transforms on the, a linked image, it's gonna not realize the up and down, it's gonna still apply a vertical transform on an angle, but if I do it on the folder, the vertical transform will stay locked to the folder. So with the folder selected, I'm gonna do a transform, so Control T, uh, and then with the height and width uh, locked, what was it? I'm gonna have to go to the instructions. 78.4, all right, so transform 78.4, angle 45 degrees, hit okay. And then the second step was just the height at 57.7. So put the folder selected again, transform, unlink, 57.7, enter, and there it is. And the neat part is that if I actually measure this diagonal dimension, it should be exactly 64 pixels. If the math worked right. So here we go, how, how long is that? 64.17, yeah, so it's, it's perfect. Just the measure, I can't measure, it doesn't snap perfectly, but it, the measurement's perfect. Uh, so now this image is good to go, and I can take the background, I don't, I don't really need this background. I don't like pixel backgrounds as much anymore, like rasterize, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this solid color and do a color fill as the background there, right? So I can really quickly edit the full color. Hit save, and then do isometric. Uh, ice, spire, hold. So that's saved. So now the neat part is because this transform is here and done on a linked layer inside the map, I can always go back and edit the one that's still in top down and it'll apply the transform cleanly. So this is, this is a, the first non-destructive technique that we've that I've shown, which is where I'm not actually flattening things down into pixels and then continuing to do more transforms. I'm referencing them um, and still have the original pixels around. So I'm going to, in my top-down image, 
Control J to create a copy. I'm gonna call this one the original image, 100 pixels. And then I'm gonna lock it and hide it. I'm gonna actually edit on the edited version. So if ever I need to go back and get something from the original, I can. But here in the edited version, uh, I got a whole bunch of secret doors and things I wanna hide. So that's actually pretty easy. So I'm gonna go and create a new layer. I'm gonna use the clone tool, which looks like a stamp, clone stamp tool. And if I alt click and I get, I'm gonna go grab a, so there's a bunch of vertical secret walls here and there are these thin walls. So I'm gonna go find a unbroken thin wall. That's a nice one. I'm gonna alt click on the wall here. I'm editing on a new layer. So I just gotta get this to line up Look at that, super easy. So I can unclick the aligned button. I will make this faster. Almost, I want the right hand side of that click. Look at that. So you can see that I've edited and gotten rid of oh, one more secret door over here. I guess that's not really working because I've got a line there. So I'm going to need to be more careful and grab it from the center. Let's try that again. It's a nice visual cue, actually. A, a clever player that knows that you're doing this might even watch for weird irregularities in the map to see where you've hidden secret doors. Uh, players, even if they don't intend to, will metagame a little bit, and it's it's actually okay in my mind. But uh, let's go grab that there and use it to hide this door here. So that clone stamp tool, super useful for removing hidden doors. All right, so that worked, um, let's save. So this is the hidden door patches. And if I ever wanna see where the hidden doors are, just gotta hide and unhide that. See what I'm doing? Just have to hide and unhide that to see where the secret doors are if I forgot. Uh, and then let's go to the edited version. The other thing I might wanna get rid of are these uh, main floor of fortress like that's going to be on the map and as the maybe as they approach i don't want them to see that so let's uh actually do another technique which is a little messy sometimes but it should work fine and that is this spot healing brush so i'm gonna make the size a little bit bigger so the spot healing brush sort of you select the thing that you think is a uh, so of a blemish on the map and it's gonna take the pixels around it and try and fix it. So you can see there that's ugly because it messes up the grid. But since we're not gonna be playing on that part, I don't really care. You know, this is just role-playing games, right? It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not gonna sell this map. I'm just using it for my players. So let's uh, just kind of clean up the gatehouse here. Yeah, do it a couple times. Real quick and dirty, does not matter. Looking good, uh, hit save, and then let's go to the isometric version of it, and you'll see that all those things have been applied in. Uh, is there anything else we wanna do here? I guess if I wanted to get fancy and apply some props, I could now, um, but this is basically all we need to do. So I'm gonna save this uh, as, a, uh, you know, as a JPEG. Actually, it's actually pretty big, so I'm gonna hit the marquee tool and I'm gonna maybe select only this amount of it. Edit, image, crop, right? And uh, save, and then save as a JPEG. And 
I got it down to less than two megabytes. All right, so a nice big two megabyte battle map that will import perfectly onto a 74 pixel hex or a 64 pixel isometric grid in uh, Foundry VTT. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully that was quick and easy to follow and uh, maybe check back next time. We'll, we'll play with Photoshop some more and maybe get into some advanced non-destructive techniques with the layering and masking, which is a, another good thing to learn so that you can make your uh, Photoshop map editing fast. All right, thanks everybody.